Have you ever wondered what it would be like to visit Antarctica? To go all the way to the very bottom of the world and stand at the South Pole? Well, come along for the ride. Hi there, I'm Dan Satterfield. I'm a meteorologist for WHNT TV in Huntsville, Alabama, and the author of the Wild Wild Weather page and Dan's Wild Wild Science Journal. And my travel colleague was Ann Posegate of the National Environmental Education Foundation. She's also a contributor to the Washington Post wildly popular Capital Weather Gang. We were given the unique opportunity by the National Science Foundation to tour the science the NSF is working on in Antarctica. Getting to the Antarctic is not easy. First, I flew to San Francisco and then boarded an Air New Zealand plane for the 13 and a half hour flight to Auckland. Then another 90-minute flight to Christchurch on the South Island. Christchurch is home to the U.S. Antarctic program, and all flights to McMurdo Base Antarctica leave from there. Ann and I arrived on January 1st, but since we were way south of the equator, it was midsummer. And Christchurch is a really beautiful city. You must see New Zealand sometime. In the middle of the city is the historic Christchurch Cathedral. Because it's a remote island, New Zealand plants and wildlife have evolved much differently. There are beautiful but unfamiliar plants and trees almost everywhere you look. And a great place to see them is the Christchurch Botanical Garden. Before we could embark on the next leg of our trip, we checked in at the National Science Foundation's Clothing Distribution Center. You know, you don't pack your own coat to go to the South Pole. You're given what is called extreme cold weather or ECW gear and no detail is overlooked for a trip down to the ice, as they call it. The toilets, please use these ones. They're a lot more comfortable than the C-17. The next day, geared up, bags packed, and ready to go. Delta, Southwest, and American do not fly to Antarctica. The only way to get there is on board a C-17, operated by the 109th wing of the New York Air Guard. Your oxygen is located beneath your seats. It's a no first class, no frequent flyer miles, no frills flight. I uh, had the earplugs that they gave me because it's going to be noisy. And this is the in-flight meal. We're currently uh, taking a look at the weather situation. These military pilots are among the few in the world that are capable of navigating in these kinds of weather on conditions. The hand, this is probably the best view we've had on the entire rotation of the Antarctic. At 37,000 feet over Antarctica. It's stunning. I discovered what it means to be boomerang. To be honest, uh, visibility-wise, it's not looking the greatest today. So. Aerial about face. The weather on the ice at McMurdo, too bad to land. When I give you the call, grab all of your belongings. Now, we were warned not to pack any necessities in our checked baggage, just in case we had to boomerang back. It happens. I did listen to this, really. So imagine the dilemma when I discovered that my shoes are in my checked bags. All I had were my extreme weather bunny boots, and they weigh five pounds each. Now, they'll keep your feet warm at minus 70, but they're a bit much for high summer weather back in New Zealand. So if it wasn't for this gentleman right here heading to the South Pole Telescope, I would be walking around for the last two days in Christchurch wearing these. This guy saved me. He climbs mountains in his spare time, and his old walking shoes were a perfect fit. Thank you very much no problem, for the yeah. shoes. <laughs> Three days later, I returned the shoes gratefully to Kyle. <laughs> the bad weather had broken, and we were ready for round two of attempting to get to Antarctica. And shortly after 11.30 a.m. on Friday, January 8th, 2010. On behalf of the crew, welcome to Pegasus Runway in Antarctica. I accomplished my lifelong dream and set foot on the ice. <laughs> The flight to McMurdo was truly stunning. Sea ice in the ocean gave way to the trans-Antarctic mountains buried in permanent ice. The view reminded me of the words of astronaut Buzz Aldrin when he stepped onto the moon. Magnificent desolation. The runway at McMurdo is on frozen ocean, sea ice. So what do you do when you land in Antarctica? Well, you take pictures of everyone else as they take pictures of you. We then boarded Ivan the Terrabus for the hour trip to McMurdo Base. It's by far the largest base in Antarctica, with nearly a 1,000 people there in summer. 
but only about 150 people will winter over during the long and bitter cold polar night. In Part 2, Survival School, Life at McMurdo, and Getting Ready to Go to the South Pole itself.